Let me guess. You have some unwanted but stubborn belly fat that you would love to get rid of. In this video, I'm sharing 10 simple ways to cut that belly fat and keep it off. We're also going to be sharing a lot of other tips and workouts on our social media. So I hope that you will follow us there as well so that you can tackle that belly fat once and for all. The most important thing to understand about belly fat is that it's really rooted in stress. And this is why you can have a situation where you're pretty regular weight in the rest of your body, but then for some reason you accumulate fat around the belly. So because stress and belly fat really go hand in hand, handling and managing your stress is going to be a really important factor to helping your body let go of that extra fat. So understand that the whole reason your body holds on to fat in the first place is for survival to help protect you from starvation. And the more that you are stressing yourself out, the more you're actually tricking your body into holding on to that belly fat even more. So while it's not exactly easy to live a stress-free lifestyle, one thing you can do is actively make time to do things that are uh, relaxing and stress relieving. Going out for a long walk in nature is a wonderful way to not only reduce your stress levels, but also incorporate that physical exercise that would also help you get rid of that belly fat. Getting more sleep is another wonderful way to reduce the levels of cortisol or stress hormone that cause belly fat. And just consider that everything you do in your life that helps you live a more relaxed and happy life is literally helping you get rid of belly fat. The second way to lose belly fat is actually to stop doing sit-ups, or at least to stop only doing sit-ups. So here's what I mean. First of all, you can't spot reduce. So the idea that if you just do sit-ups all the time, you're gonna just burn fat from your belly is really completely false. So if you actually want to be burning fat, right, getting rid of excess fat around the belly, you need to be making a big energetic demand on the body. And so the best way to do this is actually by working out the bigger muscle groups. So consider that your abdominal muscles are actually quite small compared to your leg muscles or your glute muscles. And those bigger muscle groups actually burn a lot more fat when you're working them. So you wanna make sure, number one, that you're getting a good variety of different types of exercise. You're not just doing crunches. You wanna be working out those larger muscle groups and doing full body cardio because that's actually gonna help your body to burn off that unwanted fat. And then thirdly, understand that if you're overworking your abdominal muscles and you're not giving them a chance to recover in between those workouts, you're actually creating a bigger problem in your abdomen. And even if you can get rid of the belly fat, those muscles are not going to have the definition that most of us are looking for. Number three, stop skipping meals. A lot of us who are trying to lose weight kind of have this feeling that if we just ate less or if we just skipped a meal here and there, that we would actually end up eating fewer calories and losing more weight. But in fact, the opposite is true. So when we talk about weight loss, we often hear people talk about metabolism. That's basically how quickly and how efficiently your body burns fat for fuel. So actually the best way to boost your metabolism is to eat regularly scheduled meals. Now I know it's difficult to actually eat at the same time every day, but minimally you don't want to skip meals and you don't want to calorie restrict. Again, remember that the whole reason your body is holding on to that belly fat so stubbornly is because it's in this kind of stressed out, almost starvation mode. So the more that you calorie restrict, the more that your body is going to really cling on to that excess fat because it's trying to prevent you from starving to death. So 
Eat regularly. Don't skip your meals. Make sure that you're getting an adequate amount of nutrients, not only the number of calories, but the quality of those nutrients. You want to make sure you're eating a healthy diet and eating regularly in order to help create that environment where your body is going to burn fat rather than hold on to it for dear life. So on the other side of that metabolism coin, and this is tip number four, you've got to be getting some physical exercise every day. And you probably didn't need me to tell you that, but here's what you maybe didn't know. The low intensity exercise, like going for a walk or doing relaxing yoga, is actually still really, really effective for helping you burn fat. And if we also consider that first tip about stress, again, we can see where low intensity exercise can actually be a double bonus because it's not going to be as stressful on the system as a more high intensity type workout. So a lot of people out there are, they dread going to the gym, they dread having to sweat and do some crazy workout. So what I want you to know is that it's totally fine to do lower intensity stuff. And the thing you want to remember is that if you do low intensity, you just need to do a longer duration. So the first 25 minutes of a low intensity workout like walking is really just burning off the sugar that's in your bloodstream. And it's anything after 25 minutes where you really start burning fat. So taking long walks, doing yoga classes, these are really, really effective ways of helping you burn belly fat. Being more active on a regular basis is also going to help you literally burn fat while you sleep. Not only because most of our fat burning occurs while we sleep, but because when you are being physically active on a regular basis, your body is just burning more energy even when you're being sedentary. And who doesn't want that? Also, the more muscle mass that you have, the more fat that all of those muscles are going to be burning. So simply creating a more active lifestyle, doing whatever it is you want to do that gets you active, is going to be really, really crucial. And then tip number five would be incorporating high-intensity interval training wherever you can. So basically doing little bursts of very high-intensity exercise in the midst of your work. Workouts. It's a really great way to just help push you up to that next level. So tip number six, and this is a really important one, is about protein. One of the biggest mistakes that people make who are trying to lose weight is actually eating too much protein rather than too little. So it's recommended that you only need three to six ounces of protein at a single meal. And consider that most people are eating significantly more protein than that. So it's very important that you do have protein at every meal, okay? It's very important. But it's also important that you don't exceed that six ounces. Uh, because over that amount, protein actually starts becoming toxic when it breaks down in your body. So... Uh, Make sure it's at every meal, make sure it's not too much, and make sure it's high quality because most of those protein powders out there with soy protein isolate and whey protein, this is just trash in terms of quality. So I have a couple videos on sources of protein that you can reference to find those good quality sources, but man, oh man, this is such an important tip. Another important thing to do is try to eat vegetables with every meal, or at least as close to it as you can. So not only because vegetables have all these important nutrients that help your body do the functions it needs to do, like burning fat, but also because when you eat vegetables with your meal, it actually creates um, almost like a coating around that food as it moves through your digestive tract. It actually improves your body's ability to digest the meal you just ate. It improves your body's ability to break down that protein that you ate. And it kind of slows the process of that meal moving through your digestive tract so that meal will keep you feeling fuller longer. The ninth way to bust that belly fat is simply to eat your meals more slowly. When you chew your food more thoroughly, you're actually going to release more digestive enzymes into the food. So literally, you digest the food better the more that you chew it. 
Also understand that when we're eating really fast or eating while we're doing something else, it's a stressful condition for the body. So thinking back to tip number one about reducing stress, a great way to do that is simply to have a slower meal where you're being more conscious and just paying more attention to your eating rather than eating on the go. My last tip is to try and keep your insulin levels low and to avoid spiking your blood sugar levels constantly throughout the day. Now I've talked about this in a lot of different videos that you can reference for more information, but the bottom line here is this. Not only does sugar spike your insulin, but refined carbohydrates like white bread and potato chips are just as bad. So trying to avoid those foods as much as possible, especially when you're snacking, okay? Things like uh, healthy sources of fat, all right? Nuts and avocados are good examples. They're going to have a minimal spike on your insulin. So using healthy fats for your snacks is a great way to keep those insulin levels low between meals. So I actually have dozens of other tips about weight loss and belly fat. If you would like to see more videos on this topic, please let me know. Definitely let me know if you have any questions about anything that I've shared here today. And I hope that you'll subscribe to Psyche Truth so you can come back and join me again in my next video. You can learn more about me at KarinaRachel.com. And until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching.